Twelve with John, so Philip Davis. We were told, Madam Deputy Speaker, that the reason for the first national lockdown was to give time to build capacity in the NHS, presumably so we wouldn't need any further lockdowns. So what has the Secretary of State been doing? Why has he failed in this task? Well, we know what he's been doing. Instead of building that capacity and sorting out test and trace properly, he has been spending far too much of his time seemingly relishing the power of seeking to micromanage every aspect of everybody's lives. It's perfectly clear that lockdowns don't even work. They don't save lives, they merely spread them out over a longer period of time. But lockdowns do cost lives, as well as livelihoods, not to mention the other health implications of collapsing the economy, in particular the effect on people's mental health. If lockdowns and blizzards of arbitrary rules were the solution to this problem, we would have solved it months ago. We have not been short on version after version of senseless arbitrary rules which have no scientific basis behind them at all. There has been a new set of rules virtually every single week, and yet the government still persists with this failed strategy. People are not stupid. They can see that the rules do not make any sense, and that is why they, like me, no longer have any faith in the people at the Department of Health and Public Health England who are making these decisions. I asked the Prime Minister earlier this week how many collapsed businesses and how many job losses he and his government believe are a price worth paying for pursuing this strategy. I don't think I got an answer. So perhaps the Secretary of State can answer that question today. How many job losses would it take before the Secretary of State accepted that we needed a different strategy? How many jobs is he prepared to sacrifice to keep on with this policy of lockdowns and arbitrary restrictions? Two million? Four million? Six million? People would like to know how many house repossessions is he prepared to see to keep doing this same strategy? And that gets down to the nub of this, Madam Deputy Speaker. Those people, like the Secretary of State, like the pub like people at Public Health England, they're not offering to sacrifice their own jobs to pursue this strategy. Nobody voting for this motion tonight is offering to sacrifice their own job in order to pursue this lockdown policy. Of course not. They're just expecting millions of others in our country to sacrifice their jobs to pursue this policy. Nobody voting for this motion tonight is offering to give up 20% of their salary or forego all of their income completely as so many in our country are being expected to do. Oh goodness me no, Madam Deputy Speaker. Those sacrifices are just conveniently being expected of everyone else. Madam Deputy Speaker, it stinks. I would at least have some respect for those voting for this motion and for the Secretary of State if he offered to sacrifice his job in solidarity with all the others in the country he is expecting to do the same. But there's no chance of that. No wonder so many people have no faith in politicians. No wonder so many people feel there is one rule for us and one rule for them. I never thought, Madam Deputy Speaker, I would see the day a so-called Conservative Minister would stand up and urge Parliament to further sacrifice our most basic of freedoms, collapse the economy and destroy jobs, all to pursue a failed strategy. As a Conservative, Madam Deputy Speaker, whatever the problem, collapsing the economy and destroying people's jobs and livelihoods can never be the right solution. Yeah.